And then she gonna say, the moment your friend came, you know, pointing over to Eliza, the moment your friend came, then that's when you wanted to act like you had all these balls and kept her finger up, y'all. You wanna act like you had all these balls and mines are bigger. I said, you know what? Amada, this bitch seem like a stalker or something. Like, it can't be that damn serious. You know, and this is the reason why people think people are running with storylines. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not this serious for you to show an entire world that you are pressed to be this girlfriend. And like, this is dumb. You know what I'm saying? And it's giving off weird energy. That's what it's doing. And I don't know what you want from me. Amada's probably thinking, but you need to move. Trina uh was very fake and phony when they first met she said oh how you doing grab your hand you know i'm trina this and this and that and nice to meet you like that whole energy that she gave could have been given up front the first time that they met but trina decided to be an asshole when they first met so you know it left zoe feeling like damn okay well what did i do and like trina's a mean girl and like she's being mean to me so this is the reason for zoe walking up you know, basically saying, you know, well, you know, I don't know if I'm getting ready to walk into, you know, the mean girls or whatever, you know, like that. So Trina know what she did. You know what I'm saying? Trina know exactly what she did. And that's why she came different this time. And it was totally different. It was like, you could have did all that before. You know what I'm saying? Treated this girl with respect, kindness, and decency. You know, to come somewhere and just don't even acknowledge that she's there. Like, it looked like she didn't even want to look over at Zoe the first time. And now you want to show her respect, look in her eyes, hold her hand, and tell her nice to meet her? Like, okay, girl, like, she fake and phony. And if I was Zoe, you know, I just probably wouldn't even want to work with her or them. You know what I'm saying? At all. But I guess when you got somebody in the industry that can help your brand, I guess you reach for anything. You know what I'm saying? And you, you want to go for anybody who is dead and hot at the time. And regardless of, you know, people really liking Trina and fucking with Trina, like, she is still hot at this moment. That's just it. So, it'll be a good look for Zoe, I guess. Like, I don't listen to Trina stuff. Mm -hmm. Trina was saying how, you know, with Super Cindy is the one that, you know, said you can't be on it and I'll talk to her or whatever, but... I don't know. Like I said, too, I think that um, Trina does not care for Zoe's look, so she wasn't real pressed to work with her. You know what I'm saying? And they on BBLs and tummy tucks and, you know what I mean, snatch waist and all this other stuff. So, you know, these are the type of people that Trina would rather fuck with, and it's not a Zoe. Man, Trina was in her confessional telling some, yeah, I don't know what Zoe's problem is, but I'm not going to keep running into her, and she needs to try to move on. Like, bitch, first of all, you do know what her problem is. You know what I'm saying? You was acting salty and stank when she first met you. You know what I'm saying? And then second, why don't you just be upfront with this girl instead of throwing her so much shade? You know what I'm saying? Why don't you just look her dead in her face and be like, look, we have um several artists on, you know, the album. And, you know, we're just not looking for the look right now that you have. At this point, be honest. You know what I'm saying? Be honest. You are talking about you going to talk to um super sandy to see if she gonna get on it okay girl whatever here you go dragging the shit out again you know what i'm saying maybe they'll let her on it i don't know but if i was zoe at this point i wouldn't even want to fuck with it you know what i'm saying but like i said you know maybe she's desperate and need this push in the industry but you already got suki you know what i'm saying and suki yes her brand is to me you know starting to be like just total nasty and disrespectful so maybe she's not trying to go that route. But I mean, Trina, there's not no difference. And for real, for real, Sukiana hotter than Trina. So what is the point? Like, I would just give it up if I was Zoe and just leave the whole album alone. Because like, what is it going to do anyway? Like, for real, it's just stupid. And then she even said something too. She was like, you know, I don't have to fuck with nobody if I don't want to. This is what she said. So she felt like she ain't have to fuck with you. And that's how she curved it. That was her behavior. You know what I'm saying? She's telling you out of her mouth and you got to read between the lines. This is what she said. You know, if I want to fuck with you, I can fuck with you. If I don't want to fuck with you, then I'll have to fuck with you. And that's what she said. So she felt like she didn't have to fuck with you, even look your way, respect you, nothing. And you did not even matter in that moment. You know, and Zoe's so pressed that she's not saying this shit. You know what I'm saying? And she want to be hooping and hollering to Joy as if Joy is doing the currying, you know. But Trina is the one that's shitting all over you right in front of your face and you not even fucking seeing it. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Sassy. Y'all, let's get into this ninth episode of Love & Hip Hop Miami. Okay? The episode starts off with um, Sukiana telling Trina that she wants her to meet a friend. You know, she got a friend for her to meet. So the friend ends up being Zoe, you know, and I was so glad because, you know, I really want 
somebody to have Zoe's back, you know, somebody, you know, and it just so happened to be Suki in the industry. So Suki goes outside, you know, to meet up with her and tells her, I'm gonna make a song with you. You know, we already did a song, but I got your back anything you need you know obviously Suki must have heard about how you know she got treated um with the train and joy thing and how she had to go on joy you know because they were treating her you know basically like an outcast and being mean girls and so um Suki must know about this and you know let Zoe know I got your back anything you need I got you I'm right here plus they already did a song together and um she used to do Suki's head so Zoe used to do Suki's head um back in the day so that's how they know each other but they still you know close friends now she did tell her they was gonna you know meet up and do a song they even was gonna do a video but Zoe was kind of you know apprehensive about it because she was like you know I've been calling you you don't answer you know I don't know you know if you're gonna you know be there for me and stuff and Suki is like no don't worry about it I got your back and I'm here for you you know just letting Zoe know that and I was glad you know that she has somebody like Zoe said of this caliber in the industry to help her out to boost her up as far as you know being in the industry so Zoe is telling Suki Suki that she's still salty because she can't be on the album. You know, Cindy, Super Cindy said she can't be on the album because she did cuss Joy out. And like I said, you know, um, I am 50-50 with it. I feel like she didn't say anything wrong walking up to Trina and uh, everybody else, including Joy. You know, she mentioned Mean Girls just trying to break the ice because she felt uncomfortable walking up to them. Something that we all probably would do. And, uh, you know, I don't feel it was warranted for Joy to jump at her like that. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it was wrong of Joy to, to try to star shit. You know what I'm saying? But on the other end, well, if you thinking that you could argue back and forth with Trina, cousin, slash this bitch is her sister, really. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think that that was a good move. Then to go in Super Cindy's office and be getting buck and loud over talking her and stuff that's just was unprofessional um this lady is the person who you need to help you out and continue on and you could have took a softer approach you know what i'm saying so i think that that right there was another mistake and then too um walking around with the attitude that you know well um i just i was talking to joy and i wasn't talking to Trina. you're like that was the wrong attitude because like i said and super cindy said these people are very very close joy and train and you just don't want to be stepping on people's toes as you you trying to maneuver through the industry you know what i'm saying no matter how they act because the thing about it is too you're gonna get different you know type of behaviors and attitudes towards you regardless of who you are maneuvering in the industry you know what i'm saying so you gotta take certain hits i do believe that because that's in life in general you know what i'm saying you gotta take certain hits and just bow out gracefully or you know just keep your mouth closed it's not always a time to be yelling and screaming and hooping and hollering i've learned that myself you know what i'm saying but zoe is young and she pops off and just because she has a right to pop off she feel like she can do that but that's not always the case sometimes you gotta sit back evaluate shit and let shit be you know what i'm saying and if it was meant for her it will come back so in saying that you know when suki was telling her you know stand 10 toes down make them know your name respect you put some respect in your name make her put some respect in her name the little you know pump up that she tried to give her to you know talk to trina was a bit too much you know what i'm saying and i think that when her and trina met up it was starting to come across to trina kind of abrasive but she was able to keep her composure so y'all shay brings amada um von shay and eliza together you know to have a talk okay and amada is telling von shay you know i don't know what the weird energy was about last time with the throwing things and all that because y'all remember last episode von shay was throwing stuff at her because she was mad because now amada is friends with eliza and she was feeling like um Amada was throwing it up in her face that she had a new friend, Eliza, and had not reached out to her about her baby when her baby got sick. And they were supposed to be friends. Amada is a fake bitch because they were supposed to be friends. So that was her beef. So Amada's asking her, you know, what was up with that? You know what I'm saying? You was acting all weird and stuff. And Von Shea was like, well, you sitting here like you don't even know me. You know, you know me. We were supposed to be friends. And I came to the poker night, you know, over Princess House. I came to the poker night as my nice self. Girl, okay, bitch. You just said you phony. 
<laughs> your night self and then there's that you know the kirk out that you did you know what i'm saying for some weird ass shit you know acting like a weirdo because a bitch don't want to be your friend or she was your friend at first now she acting like she don't even know you like you acting like you some type of groupie that was glad to be a modest friend and now you sad and salty because she current it you know what I'm saying? But you are making her curdy because you are acting weird, you know, and you are not seeing that. And then she's going to say, the moment your friend came, you know, pointing over to Eliza, the moment your friend came, then that's when you wanted to act like you had all these balls and kept her finger up, y'all. You want to act like you had all these balls and minds are big. Amada goes, you know, um, why are you being weird right now? Why are you being a weirdo? And then Ron Shay going to say, yeah, you need to beat my ass. Come on and beat my ass. You want to beat my ass? Like, what, you trying to provoke somebody? So security gets in the middle, and, you know, they get there real fast this time. They got there fast this time. And I guess it's because she mentioned beating somebody's ass, you know what I'm saying? So they were there quick, faster than the motherfucking hurry, and they jumped in between Von Shea and Amada real fast. Von Shea goes, this bitch is a weirdo. I'm gonna call Amada a weirdo. Y'all, Amada got so motherfucking mad. She took that plate of food, looked like it was a plate of salad, and threw it over to her face. I said, Lord, Jesus Christ. Then they start just going back and forth with the insults, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, Von Shea was like, yeah, your, your pussy, um, is so bad as the grave or something like that. She basically saying Amada is sleeping around with everybody and girl, you slept with Safari, so that will probably put your pussy in the grave. <laughs> I don't know. The producers asked Shay, um, would she like to speak on the rumors that Fabo has a fiance and that wasn't his truck, that was his fiance's truck, the Tesla that he gave her at their daughter's party, you know? And she don't want to talk about it. She like, yeah, y'all wasting y'all time. Like the producer actually came over and was trying to probe them to talk about it. And she was like, no, no, honey. And got up and walked off. Girl, she waited until she got in front of Fable. She was like, what's going on? Because um, these rumors are out. Y'all, they show Tasha K. Go ahead, Tasha K. Y'all, Tasha K is on her show saying how Shay told Fabo that she was pregnant. He told her to run and get an abortion because he had a fiance. And that uh, he was engaged and he was in Milwaukee two weeks ago, you know, and the producers asked her, well, was he in Milwaukee two weeks ago? She was like, hell no, you know, and uh, Fabo is full of shit, you know, because he offers information to Shay. You know, y'all, we got to look into what these niggas be saying when they're saying it, because there's a lot of truth in when they open their mouth. You know, he just randomly says, the crazy thing is, the ring she got on her finger, she bought. <laughs> I said, damn. Um, yeah, Shay was real quick with it, though. She was, because that's the thing. We hear stuff, but we choose to ignore it. Shay goes, so she bought her own ring, and she went around Milwaukee telling everybody that y'all was getting married. Fabo was like, you know, I ain't buy no ring, and she's delusional, y'all. That's the first clue. Calling the bitch crazy. That is your first cue to know that, yeah, what the rumor is that he's cheating, that's what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Because he's quick to call her crazy, but what are you doing to make this bitch crazy? That's the thing. Shay choose to ignore the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Even though the red flags are there. I'm not going to deal with his stupid hoes that can't deal with the fact that they're together and he's hers. Girl. <laughs> Until the tables turns and it's you. That's when you're going to start digging into information and what's going on. You want to turn a blind eye at the things that you see he's doing until it's your turn. And that table is turning and you're going to be digging into the information that you need, trying to find information that you need to see why he's not dealing with you or why he's doing the things that he's doing. So keep on ignoring the shit, Shay, because it's going to blow up in your face. And the thing about it is, y'all, y'all know Shay has been pressed to have a man for a very long time. You know what I'm saying? And then, too, she was the one who did not tell us who her baby father was for several months. Like, we didn't know who this nigga was. And he did not want to come on TV. And I want to know why. You know what I'm saying? So, Shay know he full of shit, but she choose to ignore all of the red flags. So, then she gonna say, you know, I really don't care what nobody has to say as long as he's good when he's with me. That's all I really care about. His past is his past. <laughs> really? I we ignore the warning signs, y'all, because we desperately want a man. Like, damn. You know, and he right there in your face lying to you, and you want to believe it. You know what I'm saying? And it's showing you, oh, yeah, he want to be over here, so whatever he did, fuck it. No, bitch. 
Because sooner or later, he's going to get tired of you. And you're going to be in the same seat that the other bitch is in. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it goes. So Shay just info. They ain't going to have a nerve that when your brother try to step the favor for disrespecting your mother, you're going to come outside and tell him he acting weird. Like, what? This nigga is disrespecting your brother and already disrespecting your mother. MJ was like, yeah, um, we need to talk and everything else. We need to get the um, family together because we need to all get along. And I re really appreciate you disrespecting my mother and stuff like that. He was like, look, um, can you help me with these boxes? Because if you're not going to help me with these boxes, then we don't need to even talk. You know what I'm saying? You need to be helping me with these boxes. He is straight disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? And it is a bad look for Shay. And she don't even see it, y'all. They start getting into it. And um, the brother's like, yeah, I want some. I want, I'm, I'm trying to see, you know what I'm saying? Like, he ready to fight at this point. And the producers is in the middle of them. And Fable's like, yeah, you know, I don't even do all that talking. And Shay comes outside, you know, um, you being just disrespectful and a weirdo. And this is not the right time. You over here causing problems and you on some bullshit. And you are embarrassing me like, bitch, what? Embarrassing you? You are embarrassing yourself. This nigga came over your house to take up for your mother, okay? And because it's getting Fabo upset and riled up, then you got a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy the way Shay is looking and she does not even see. Even started going on Fable to myself. Yeah, and you came over there in that, them hot-ass clothes. Look at you. And that's the problem. It's probably going to your brain. You can't even think right. Girl. You gonna get everything that's coming to you because you are shitting on everybody around you and this nigga is a piece of shit like this is getting crazy and i can't even believe she is this stressful man you know but she'll see she'll see in the end y'all but um let me get back in here and um do some work okay i will see you ladies and gents later don't forget to like comment and subscribe okay i will be reviewing the basketball wives okay what was it? The one with Evelyn and Brooke and, you know, a couple other girls, y'all. I don't fuck with Vanessa. What is wrong with her? Like, this, she looked like, oh my gosh, she is a whole hot ass mess. Like, damn. <laughs> Girl, okay. Um, but yeah, y'all, I will see you ladies and gents later. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, okay? Bye.